I could first say that, like you said, there are many who have this libertarian standpoint that mm. any any government interference is wrong, which is a fine standpoint to begin with. But this, um, where they come from, this uh, sort of anarchist view, yeah. Uh, yeah, basically means to not take responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, and an anarchist is saying I'm against all politics, yeah. and and therefore he will not even uh, he will not even um, go into specifics. Yeah. Too you know? good for this world. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm uh, no, I'm I'm mm. above that. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like a half god. I yeah. can I can see you idiots are playing around with politics, but I'm yeah. against all that. Yeah. And it's a fine position, but it's it's about not taking responsibility. Yeah, it's an ideological so. pure uh, position, yeah. Because I, I wanted to, like, this is something I've said, and I guess this is falls more into the libertarian purist idea. But I've I've talked about like my dream would be you know, you dismantle the cultural department, and the state should only take care of sort of well, libraries, old churches, like typical part of the national treasure. But there should be no support for things that are made of new things, theater plays or uh, while painting. Well, it doesn't get mm. support, so that's fine. But uh, nothing that is made of new cultural products. Well, I think that the, the whole idea of, uh, like I said, the anarchist view of, of, of getting rid of government interference, mm. I think that is, it's a, it's a, it's a nice uh, romantic dream, but it's mm. not going to happen. I mean, man has always had totalitarian governments of some mm. sort or, or another. And, but I think when it comes to culture, the major problem today is that it's uh, the, the government agencies that run the, the culture money, they are, uh, they are running it with a hidden agenda. Exactly. And, you know, to quote <coughs> Max Stirner, who is one of my favorite philosophers, that he prefers a judge who is open about his egoistic interests <laughs> over a judge who's supposedly uh, completely neutral because then yeah. he knows where he is he's at yeah. okay he has those interests great yeah. now we know that's settled yeah. uh, and today at least in Norway they they are pretending to have this neutral view so the government gives out man money as you know and they well the politicians they decide the amount of money but then this uh, panel of experts who has nothing to do with the politicians uh, they say. choose who gets the money. Yeah, well, they say that. But yeah. the, pr the problem, of course, is that who are those experts on what merits have they been chosen? Yeah, and, and that's where you come to an argument for having a more libertarian, purist position. Because you know that, like I talked to the, the squandering ombudsman about that, and we know it from before also, that, that if you use uh, leftist buzzwords in your application, uh, if you work to sort of dismantle or study or recontextualize uh, the, the typical Western values, mm -hmm. uh, then you can get support. And uh, we know also, of course, that, that now with the, really the, the onslaught of crit critical theory also in Norway, that will just grow much, much more. So wouldn't that be a good argument that uh, to say that we should have the purest position and work as much as we can to abolish cultural politics altogether. Uh, well, I, I take that stand. Yes, mm. absolutely. But mm. we have to we have to look at models where we can do something else and just take it away as well. Mm. I mean, we have to be like the socialist left party in Norway, who is against uh, the government church, but they want lesbians as priests in the government church. <laughs> so, they, so, so even though they are against it as an institution, mm. they have they have something to say if that institution is kept, which is it, it most likely will because uh, yeah because Norway is a very politically a very conservative environment, you know, since uh, Gerhardsen and uh, conservative on behalf of the social democracy uh, on, on behalf of the system that was created after the Second World War. Social welfare, welfare, uh, welfare the, state. All of them from left to right are quite conservative when it comes oh, yeah. to how the situation was at that time. Yeah. Maybe the only part that is a little bit forward thinking is Høyre, the, but right uh, literally yeah. but all the other ones mm. are pretty conservative well the progress party has made some suggestions now uh, now lately but um, yeah but uh, they uh, are quite conservative too it's just that uh, they want uh, the government to be a little bit careful when they uh, attack yeah. people yeah now uh, one counter argument i mean 
Okay, so we're talking about being so-called pragmatic. You have the situation is what it is, and then if you shall, if you perceive it as something negative, because it, what what you get is is political propaganda and camaraderie, uh, then you have to sort of work with the current situation, not just some dream castle. Um, but I've been thinking when you when you read about uh, the, the cultural history of cultural politics. Um, you see, and like I was talking with Doug Solil, the art sociologist, about that, and I read his books later too that really give very solid information about how, and describing how the whole uh, modern system of fine art, which basically just sort of disintegrates the whole Western cultural value system, that could never have come in place were it not for a strong state, in, you know, uh, uh, making academies, museums, uh, universities where you have artists and educated, mm -hmm. etc., etc. Et there was uh, internally sort of talk that I might be suggested for a small position at the Culture Council in Norway. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, never materialized. But, but then I, I come to, came to think of it because, you know, you can be a purist, but then the actual opportunity comes. If I had been asked, I would have to either say yes or no, obviously. So there are two arguments. You could say, I should say no, because if I go in there, there's one among how many, and that's, there's little I can do, mm -hmm. and I end up just sort of saying, approving the system, because I was a part of it, that you could, you could argue. And it didn't help very much. Maybe I get to do some things, but it doesn't help very much. And if, let, let's say, okay, we're, we're, we've been talking about, um, uh, uh, you know, paintings or, or whatever for, for public buildings. And let's say, I'm so concerned about, about classical figurative painting that I get to, to uh, erect some kind of a committee on classical figurative paintings for public buildings. Now, we both know the way semantics work where uh, the, the, the cultural minister in Norway was asked why is there so little funding for, cult uh, for classical figuratives. And her answer, her at the time, through some art historians, uh, historians obviously, was that, well, we have photographs, that's figurative. Mm -hmm. And so you just do that. So let's say I got to erect some kind of committee on classical figurative uh, decoration. And then they get more funding to use for that as well. And then as soon as I'm out, it's just, well, photographs or some semi-bad uh, contemporary figurative painting. I mean, that would be the argument against to say, to say yes. But of course, on the other hand, you are against the system, but then you get the chance to do something about it and you say no. Yeah. Well, I mean, that is the big mystery with, with Europe and the philosophy of Europe the last hundred years. This, uh, uh, this project of uh, this critical theory of uh, uh, pulling everything we know apart, mm -hmm. all concepts shall be twisted and turned, and mm -hmm. uh, whether it is a meaningful goal behind it, yeah. or if it's, or if it's uh, some sort of nihilism, that would be the two alternatives the way I see it. I mean, the, obviously the most meaningful goal would be to destroy Western civilization and Western ideas, classical antiquity thinking. Mm. Uh, but then the question is, what are they replacing it with? Do they think they can replace it with something more meaningful? I don't know. Uh, but when it, when it, since you're mentioning that about the Cultural Council, I mean, I would say to you personally, you should think egoistically. Mm. Because, uh, of course, you will sit there and most likely you will not get a lot done, but maybe it's a nice salary. <laughs> and I mean, I mean yeah. uh, you know, in, yeah. in culture today, I, one thing which is lacking a lot is egoism. Uh, because, uh, like I said, there has always been officials or government in, uh, involved in, in culture. Mm. Uh, but if you look at the past, it was more egoistically motivated Mm -hmm. for a long time, like dukes and so forth, would hire a painter because he could paint them really great. Yeah. They could look uh, great and, and he could paint something there, they would see it every day, they would love to see it. And the problem, of course, with art is that it's not egoistically motivated. It's some sort of idealistic approach. Mm. Uh, those who sit in the council, they are not choosing a painter because they love him. Uh, quite frankly, that would be no. like an unpure judgment. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. uh, but, so, in, in a way. So they, yeah. they should pick something which is, according to the standard of art, good. Mm. Not what they are longing for. But mm. of course, 
the problem with that kind of thinking where you're not going after a work you love mm. eventually you you fall into nepotism and you you yeah. fall for the friends you like yeah Thank you for checking out this clip from the Cave of Apelles. If you want to see the entire segment, become a $5 patron at patreon.com slash caveofapelles and access all our Dark Flame videos, masterclasses and bonus material with our guests.